Welcome to Your Daily Writing Habit, episode number 595. If you are writing a book or thinking about it, or maybe you've started writing your book, but you're having some trouble getting it done, you are in the right place. Good morning. Happy Friday. I'm your host, Christine Whitmarsh. If you're looking for me online, especially social media, look for Christine Inc. I-N-K, like that stuff we write with. Each day, I'm sharing with you the writing habits I've learned over my 19 years as a ghostwriter, book coach, and author. I have found that three things in particular have a huge impact on your success as an author, and they have the ability to turn a quote-unquote non-author into a published one. Those three things are writing fundamentals, productivity, and mindset habits. Here's today's quote. Mark Twain had three rules for writing. The first was write. The second was write. And the third was write. (laughs) And that is from a 1917 issue. It was an article in a 1917 issue of the newspaper, The Inland Printer. And once again, good morning. Happy Friday, everyone. Yes, write, write, write. Everybody has rules for writing, right? And I feel like, why should I be the exception? So for today's FAQs Friday, where I answer your frequently asked questions, whatever book-related questions are on your mind, the the question today is, (laughs) Christine, if you had to choose your top three writing rules, what would they be? And I love this question, actually, because I love the challenge of brevity and narrowing down my thoughts. So here goes, and a quick disclaimer, at this point in history, I am not reinventing any literary wheels. (laughs) So at the very least, consider this my own personal curation, curation of writing rules based on my experience. Rule, quote unquote, number one, put us in your story, visually, viscerally, and in any other way you can think of. A big thing I see in manuscripts um, from authors when I review them, um, authors assuming that, well, we must all know that, so they don't include enough details and they kind of lose me. So I'm not talking about the inane details like describing what every window and door and, you know, mailbox looks like, but if it's a special window or maybe like a metaphorical window or something pertinent to the character reveals something about a character, then yes, if there's any sort of specialness, describe it to us. So no, I'm not looking for a police sketch of physical characteristics of every single thing in your story, but I'm looking for the impression it gives off because that's the thing that we can't guess. We don't, you know, believe it or not, think about it. You know the impressions that your characters give off, that the locations, that your story, you have a lot of knowledge kind of like from your writer's soul about your story. We don't have any of that. We are not assuming any of that. So We can't see inside your head or feel inside your soul the feelings that your story and the people in it give off. So when it comes to those sorts of things, assume that we know nothing and then describe them from your soul, not just your eyes. Put us in your story, visually, viscerally, through your soul, all the other things that you think are obvious but might not be obvious to us. Number two, begin and end chapters like you mean it. Now, this is where you really get to show off as an author. Those beginning and ending lines of chapters, those are where readers will go, wow, oh my God, this is some amazing writing happening. This is awesome. I think of it like the opening and closing scene of an act in a play. The curtain comes up and there's that big opening line that just puts you right in the story. The audience is hooked. They're in the moment. The same thing right before the curtain drops. There's another opportunity for a breathtaking line. And then the curtain drops and the audience goes, whoa. (laughs) Use these moments to your advantage as an author, and they can actually improve a reader's overall impression of all the writing in between. That's right. If you're going to obsess about any parts of your book, which I think we all do, obsess over the opening and closing lines of chapters, and of course, the opening and closing lines of your book. They can actually improve the overall impression of everything in between. Number three. And finally, for my final rule of the day, I'm going to steal from one of my my favorite writing rules from the late, great Kurt Vonnegut because it's just so important. Aim for every sentence to do one of two things. Reveal something about a character, and for nonfiction books, that means you as the narrator, or move the plot forward in some way in a fiction book. I find this mostly to be aspirational, if we're thinking of it like an aspirational rule versus a literal rule. If you try to get every sentence to do one of those two things, reveal something about a character or move the action forward, you might might drive yourself a little crazy, but it's a fantastic aspirational rule. And it really works well when you're looking at a paragraph 
or a section or maybe like an entire chapter of your book that seems to have stalled or fallen off the tracks or it's just not working. This is a great rule to apply in those situations. Go back and sentence by sentence, look to see where you stopped doing this, where you stopped using every sentence or aspiring to have every sentence reveal something about a character or move the action forward. I bet you're going to get to the bottom of this really quickly and you're going to find why this entire section of your story has stalled because you're going to realize that you, at some point you stopped doing this and you started just kind of stalling and describing things. So reveal something about a character or move the plot forward. And those are my three rules. I would love to know your favorite go-to writing rules. Please drop by my Ink Authors group. I will drop the link in the show notes as always. Ink Authors on Facebook and let me know your favorite writing rules. We all get to have them. You don't have to be Stephen King to have favorite writing rules. So I'd love to know yours. Thank you for joining me here on Your Daily Writing Habit, where I am helping you write and finish writing an awesome book. Until tomorrow, happy writing.